Most people think that bears hibernate, um, that they're asleep, they're unaware, they just a long winter's nap, but actually they're actually alert, uh, they're aware of their surroundings. Uh, this particular bear is grooming her cubs, nursing her cubs daily, and so there's a lot of activity in the den, they just don't leave the den, they stay there for several months. And so if we're going to do work on her or if we're going to do work with the cubs, we have to sedate uh, the adult bear, the mother. And so the first thing we did when we got here today was um, we sedated her with a dart. Um, in about 10 minutes, she fell asleep. Um, she's unaware of her surroundings at the moment. She's not aware of any of the noises or the, uh, the activity that's going on at the moment. Um, we'll, take, we'll do our work and then when we're gone, um, she'll recover from that and be back to hibernating here by the end of the day. Where we are today is part of the Penn State um, research study we have going on in cooperation with the Game Commission looking at mange and black bears. Mange is a condition caused by a mite that burrows into the skin. Um, once it burrows into the skin, it causes itching, hair loss, secondary bacterial infection on the skin, and it's in a syndrome of a disease that can progress to poor body condition and even death in some cases. I was really interested because it's a really curious problem that they have, that mange has been in the environment for so long, it's been in coyotes and foxes for a really long time, but bears only relatively recently have started to get mange. So the first case of sarcoptic mange in black bears in Pennsylvania was found in 1991 and since then has increased um, in reports throughout the state and no one's really sure why that is. The main goal with the collaring of the bears is that we have them collared in triplicates with one healthy control bear, one bear that has mange and is not treated, and then one bear that has mange and is treated with that one dose of ivermectin. Because this bear has cubs, we will also collect additional information on how large the litter is, what the sex ratio of the litter is, what the weights of those cubs are, and then eventually we'll actually put ear tags on those cubs today and be able to follow them uh, through the rest of their life with those ear tags. And so we'll learn a little bit about cub survival, cub dispersal, and stuff like that.